Welcome parishioners, visitors, and guests to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish family on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In our first reading this weekend, we hear Elijah say, This is enough, O Lord. Elijah is praying for death, feeling frustrated, defeated, and lost. Something we can relate to. An angel appears to him and tells him to eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too long for you. In our gospel again, we hear Jesus telling us that he is the bread of life, bread for the journey to eternal life. And are you feeding your soul? As we begin our liturgy, let us listen and see God in this Eucharistic celebration with hymn number 431, Blessed be the Lord, number 431. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. Will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Bless be the Lord, bless be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not. Is there anyone celebrating birthday today or this week? Any birthdays? No. Any wedding anniversary? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather around the Lord's table, let us thank Him for all the blessings we receive from Him. And as we enter into this new week, let us offer our lives. And let us recall to our minds all our failures and sins and ask God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us sing glory to our God. <clears throat> glory to God in the Give you th 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring we pray to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. This is the word of the Lord. Taste and see 
Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven. Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, 
and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the first reading from the book of Kings, we heard how prophet Elijah Who, was, who wanted to save his life from the hands of Queen Jezebel, who was searching for him to kill him because of his prophecy. And therefore, Prophet Elijah is fleeing for his life. He wanted to escape, so he ran away to the desert. And he was traveling, journeying, and he said, when he came to a certain point, he said, enough, Lord, enough. I am fed up. Take my life. Take my life. And then he was tired. He was sitting under the tree. When the angel of the Lord came, woke him up and said, Elijah, get up eat this, eat this bread, drink. And he did it. And again, he went to sleep. After some time again, the angel comes and wakes him up and asks him to eat the bread. And he did it. He ate the bread and he started his journey. Journey for 40 days. He was sustained by this bread. Dear brothers and sisters, we are on a journey. Journey to the mountain of God. Journey to the promised land. And we feel wearied and tired at times. We feel let down. We feel disappointed with struggles in life, with our faith with our financial problems, with relationship troubles, family troubles, misunderstanding, sicknesses. There are lots of things that makes us wearied, tired of this journey. And someday we might have said or thought, take my life enough, enough, enough. And here comes Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament. All that was prophesied about Jesus is being fulfilled in the New Testament in the person of Jesus. And he offers himself saying, I have come down from heaven as a living bread. Whoever eats this bread will live. Whoever drinks my blood will live for eternally. And what is this bread? His own body. His own flesh. That's what he does 
on the last supper he takes the bread what did he say this is what my body he didn't say this is a symbol of my body no this is a this is my body given up for you for your eternal life there is no symbolic thing here the real body the real flesh of god in the person of jesus and therefore maybe in us there is a misunderstanding sometime this is only symbolic if we think so we are mistaken and you know as we read further maybe in the next week sunday we will hear that scripture passage many people left him many disciples left his company he said it is very hard you are you are speaking nonsense how can you give your flesh your body as food for us you are son of mary and joseph we know you where you come from and many people left him did jesus change his teaching about this truth did jesus change no he repeatedly said i am the bread that came from heaven and that bread is my flesh he repeatedly said it you read the gospel of john chapter 6 all the whole chapter a lengthy chapter speaking fully about the eucharist the reality of it therefore if i want to have life eternal i need to approach him who has given himself fully for me i need that food as i journey on my way previous to this passage jesus said to the people work for food that will last forever how much which how how much thirst how much hunger do we have for jesus how do i take the sunday holy mass i come to worship god to pray together as one family to worship god as one family and to receive jesus and how much do i prepare myself to receive the jesus who comes to me in the form of this bread formerly those of you who are seniors you know it was the rule of the church that before receiving communion going for the mass 24 hours you have to fast that is brought down brought down now the church teaches at least one hour before the mass you need to fast and prepare i think we water down so much the sacrament sometimes you do not take it seriously do not give much importance to that suppose when you come to the church you believe that jesus is present in the most blessed sacrament of the eucharist and this is in the tabernacle here how many of us feel that i am going to the presence of my god and how much how do i express my reverence to my god we need to reflect on our own life of faith when you feel tired and weary in life to whom or to what do you turn do you have some time to come over to the church we have a eucharistic chapel here the church is opened from morning till evening 4:30 or if the church is locked the south side there is a 24 into 7 eucharistic chapel 
how many of us find time to spend at least some time before the Lord who, who tells us, come, I give you life. Who waits for you and for me. How much time we spend for many other things in this life, in a day, in a week. How do we take the day of the Lord, the Sabbath, seriously? When I feel wearied, go to him. Jesus says, come to me, all who are wearied and are burdened. I will give you rest. I will console you. I will comfort you. Come to me. But we have to go to him wholeheartedly. Let us ask for that grace. Let us ask for that grace. Therefore, Jesus is not going to change his teaching and the church is not going to cha change the teaching about the Eucharist. It is not a symbol. It is the real body and blood of Jesus when the bread is consecrated in the Mass. And we need to prepare ourselves spiritually to receive the Lord. Then only it will have its effect in our life. Otherwise, it can do the just opposite. What happened to Judas when he received the first Holy Communion? He was not prepared. He had all malice thought in him to betray the Lord. That's why the second reading is calling us to do this one. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering. That's the Holy Mass. So when I receive the communion, when I come for the Mass, when, when, I, when Jesus is in me, I must try to live as he is asking me to live. And what is he asking today? Get rid of all bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling with all other malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. This should be the effect of the reception of the Holy Communion. We must get rid of all such unwanted things in our life. Our relationship should be better with each other, within the family, with our friends, in our workplaces, with our neighbors. We, may, we need to be more compassionate as Jesus is compassionate. We need to be more merciful, more generous, more giving, more forgiving, more humbling, more thankful. That is the effect of the Holy Eucharist when we receive them. That should come, that should happen in our day-to-day -day life. Let us ask for that grace. Let us ask the Lord to give us the grace to approach Him every time. He's always there for us, for you, for me. Do we go to him? How much with preparation we come for the Holy Mass? After receiving the communion, do I become more merciful, more compassionate, more forgiving, more loving, more giving? Allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Let us together profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and strengthening of the church wherever she is persecuted, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism in the world and for the blessings of lasting harmony, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers by land, sea, and by air, that they will be kept safe and arrive at their destination in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who serve our country in the armed forces, that God will bless them and keep them out of harm's way, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer will experience the redemptive meaning of suffering through friendship with Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be kind to others, compassionate and forgiving, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for Michael Nedahan, whose memorial service was celebrated this week, and for Richard and Margaret Smiths, that they may enjoy Jesus' presence and be brought into his heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Eucharist, for us to be, to live a holy life as food for eternal life. As we bring before you all our needs and prayers, grant them according to thy holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are brought forward, let us sing together number 321, this bread that we share, number 321. Bring all our wounds to be healed. 
Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded in by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here fores foreshadowed. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we are clean. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, death O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you are held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that parting of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, O Pope, David, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Richard and Margaret Smith, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Please say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn number 360, One Love Released, number 360. Oh 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth 
through Christ our Lord. Please take the Jubilee prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, we ask you to renew the Diocese of Green Bay and make of us a community of missionary disciples. We love marriages, homes, and families. With the love of Jesus and love for one another, renew our priest and parish leaders with a zeal for souls. Invigorate the Diocese with many new vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. Fill our churches, our classrooms, and our faith communities with many followers, eager to be sent on mission, to live and share the gospel. Help us to impact our communities with the joy of the gospel, especially by serving those in greatest need. Amen. The announcements. You are invited to join us for Vespers on Tuesday, August 14th at 6.30 p.m. to celebrate the Vigil of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 15th of August is the Feast of the Assumption of Blessed Mother. That is the day of, Holy Day of Obligation. Therefore, the Mass will be 15th August, morning 7 a.m. and evening 7.30 p.m. Please make it point to attend the Holy Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in the joy of Christ. Thanks be to God. And let us go forth singing number 630, Lead Me, Lord, number 630. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. shall be